Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to a very special video. For those of you who can remember, my first ever tier list was what put me on the map, and is the reason I became a Vigilante 8 YouTuber, and since then I've done several other tier lists, however the one I felt needed the biggest overhaul was my second offense tier list. I have a very heavy focus when it comes to speedrunning, and due to that, my tier lists were quite skewed. This time around, however, I pulled out all the stops and grabbed the help of fellow YouTuber Zante and one of the original members of Luxoflux, David Goodrich. Between the three of us and five hours later, we all finally reached an agreement on an actual tier list for both the special weapons and the characters. However, before we begin, there's kind of a few rules I need to cover for these lists, and if I don't, I'm probably going to get some very angry comments, so let's try and cover those real quick. Firstly, these lists are taking three factors into consideration. The main focus will be local multiplayer. I'm aware online is a thing, however it's quite buggy, so we're going to be looking at how they'd handle in a couch PvP match to take all the lag factors out of the equation. There will also be two minor focuses of both survival and speedrunning. The speedrunning part you should be familiar with by now if you've seen my other tier lists, and survival is simply how well the character, or the special, copes with survival mode. If a character excels at all three, then expect to see him or her very high in the tier list. Secondly, we only took the base game into consideration, meaning the game that launched in 1999 and the one we all love from our childhood is the one that will be judged here. Bugs, glitches, and unintentional buffs or nerfs are all part of the equation here, no matter how much they may have been fixed in other versions of Second Offense. And thirdly, while I may be using the classic S to D tiers as usual, I've added a provisory this time around. The game is incredibly well designed, and despite the fact I may put someone in C tier, that does not mean that they're bad or have a bad special. But the fact that the entire cast is at least good in one way or another, they all have usage despite being near the bottom of the tier list. So I may rank someone as a C, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. However, D tier does mean they're fucking terrible though, and that's where we're gonna start. Finally, this video will be structured very similar to my tier list for the original V8. Specials first and then characters, so without further ado, let's see the poor special weapon that got stuck in D tier. Invasion! Surprise, surprise. It's not Convoy this time. Hot times have changed, huh? Man, I don't know how on earth I ranked this thing in B tier last time, but we're certainly fixing that mistake this time around. The Coltsman used the Super Invasion Special, which summons several UFOs to your targeted opponent. While I was correct about how this special is more or less a copy and paste from V8 Dave, there are some major differences between the two. Firstly, the original spawned on top of the opponent no matter where they were on the map. However, the Super Invasion spawns from the Coltsman, so the range of the weapon is drastically reduced. Think of it like Chassis Star Power, same sort of deal. However, unlike Chassis Star Power, the damage and whammy potential of this weapon is... well, garbage. However, I'd be amiss without mentioning this weapon's single saving grace. Due to how the UFOs behave, they avoid collisions with walls, otherwise they get stuck so they hit more often if they're forced to stay closer. Now in Arizona, there is the movie drive through and in that tight spot where the quest item spawn is a pretty good spot for this special to do some work. Just look at this comparison from a normal special to a contained one. So while it does have some upsides like multi-hitting, large range, and being disruptive, those upsides are very limited and this special can't compete with the rest of the game, hence why it sits by itself in D tier. I can feel as if I've already made people mad by claiming this is the second worst special, but bear with me here. Garbage Man is one of two who will use a special weapon called the Collector. This special has two outcomes. It will either pick up the target and slam them into the ground before throwing them away, or it will eat them and do continual damage before spinning them out the back. The different outcomes are determined by the size of the target. If it's larger than a certain point, it will get slammed, but if not, it will get eaten. Although the exception to this rule is uh, Team Fast, because that'd be pretty fucking gruesome. So yes, while this special does sit this low down on the list, like I said earlier, being in C tier does not mean it's bad, but it just lags behind the other specials when taking everything into consideration. Although, that being said, I love G-Man's special weapon a lot personally. The damage this thing does to heavyweight characters is fantastic, and it is even a direct counter to Convoy since it ignores his trailer health. This special is also a ton of fun to use with environmental hazards, with the main example being the abuse you can do with the California cranes. 
However, the environmental upside is also a downside. Relying on the map to do your work for you means it lacks on maps with nothing going on, like Winter Games or Ghost Town. Plus, while this may be great against heavies, it lacks against lightweights, due to the damage being percentile based rather than a flat damage. And also, it doesn't destroy or total cars while they're being eaten, which forces you to turn around and finish them off. So while this special may be fun to use and is kinda useful in speedrunning, it's difficult to utilize it in survival, and good luck trying to catch someone if it's a multiplayer if they're playing a lightweight. Move them out. Convoy may have made it out of D tier, but he didn't get real far. Convoy uses the Rolling Thunder, which is a blast of his truck horns that will shove opponents away while doing minor damage. You know, I really used to shit on this special a lot, but playing the game more in different modes and in situations has turned me around in this special. Not a lot, though, I still think it kinda blows, but it certainly has its uses. Firstly, this is one of the few specials that ignore walls, meaning you don't need a direct line of sight in order to hit someone with this just close enough for the horns to connect. It's also non-tracking, which may seem like a downside, but with radar jammers, halo decoys, and Nina's existing, there's already a ton of counters for tracking weapons, so having something so simple can be a good thing. It can also be good for defensive use since it deletes projectiles, and you're sure as shit not going to be avoiding them as convoy. The biggest upside for this, however, is crowd control. Due to having a decent amount of ammo, you could push people around either away from you or away from power-ups and weapons, or like G-Man, you can abuse the environment in your favor as well. All that aside though, this special doesn't climb much higher due to a lack in damage thanks to the physics, plus low whammy and totaling potential doesn't make it useful in speedrunning or survival. You know, this special wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Convoy's fucking trailer, so if you want to blame something, blame that. Beware. You know, the gates of hell kinda got less threatening since last time. Padre Destino uses his Hades Gate, which is a special weapon that gives him invincibility before teleporting to his targeted opponent, then does considerable damage and ignites the target. Well, if it manages to hit, that is. This special might be ranked lower than last time, but that's mostly due to everybody else moving up. Compared to last time, there's a hell of a lot more to consider this time around. Firstly, this is one of two second offense specials that are map-wide, meaning no matter where you are, this weapon can come after you. Secondly, this special may lack in whammy potential or totaling it makes up for it by being a fantastic utility tool. This special allows you to pick your fights as the fourth heaviest character in the game, which is a powerful tool in its own right. You can get out of trouble from multiple enemies, bear hugs, or tracking specials like Team Fast, Coltsman, or Boogie. You can also get into trouble by jumping into an ongoing fight between two others and hit them while they're preoccupied, or even hitting an unsuspecting opponent stuck in a bear hug on the other side of the map. Also, I know I said this special weapon lacks in whammy potential, but that's only the conventional whammy damage it misses out of. This weapon, when it comes to whammies, is rather... unique. During the duration of this special, all the whammies you get right up before activation and during are stored up until you connect with a special, meaning you can fire a crater maker and still get the full whammy damage even if you connect seconds after the crater maker. This special isn't without its downsides, of course, the obvious one being the pure fact Padre is perfectly happy to go without this special for an entire match, unlike most other characters. This special also makes you a sitting duck when you do come out the other side, something I've used to my advantage a lot in speedruns with AI Padres, and sitting still is not what you want to do in any game mode, though you can avoid this if you use an afterburner right before. So while this special is a great utility tool and works with Padre's stats well, he's perfectly fine without it, and it has one of the longest cooldowns compared to most special weapons. Man, Urbaki sure climbed up these rankings since last time, huh? Urbaki uses the Rift Blade, a weapon that turns her tsunami into a large blade that tracks an opponent and will cut through everything between her and them. This special's biggest upside is similar to that of Hades Gate, and it's the fact you're able to pick your fights. Hello, Scout! What? Come on, man! What did I say? And with a character like Obaki, you really need that ability if you want to be able to contest. Thanks to the iframes on this special, you're able to get in and out of any situation before your enemy has the chance to hold you down and one-shot you. This special may not be map-wide like Hades Gate, but has a large range and goes through anything between you and your target, including walls, destructibles, and even other opponents, allowing you to chip down your target at a safe distance. Of course, this special isn't without its downsides, the low whammy potential outside of mortars, plus the fact this is the only special in the game that will not total an opponent, making it a great defensive tool, but a pretty terrible offensive tool in most situations, outside of maps with lots of walls allowing you to get the jump on your opponent. 
However, with its use in online and how it complements Obaki's game plan, unlike Padre who just doesn't give a fuck, it raises ever so slightly above Hades' game. Hi, hi. You know, I sure am glad no one ever got the bright idea to weaponize tornadoes. Dusty Earth uses Tribal Magic, which is a Seeking Tornado created by his Spirit Falcon. This tornado will lift up the targeted car, spinning them around and damaging them for several seconds. Huh. Kinda like Boogie's Disco Inferno, actually. It also has similar weaknesses. You can't outrun it as easily, but jammers, decoys, and lemming missiles will still easily fool the Falcon, but you can also pick up multiple enemies if they're bunched together. Where it differs from Disco Inferno, however, is that it's more consistent at the cost of overall damage and whammy potential. The reason this thing is difficult to get whammies with is due to the tick damage on the tornado and they're not as often as Boogie's projectiles for Disco Inferno. That being said, it does still whammy with tracking weapons and actually has an infinite combo thanks to bear hugs. Simply bear hug, then special, right as it's about to run out, then near the end of the special, bear hug again, rinse, and repeat. Of course, I didn't come up with this idea and shit like this is why communities are important and why you shouldn't let one dumb idiot do an entire tier list for a game all by himself. Basically Loki's special, but better. Nina uses the Lemming Missile, a 3 ammo missile that acts as a map-wide halo decoy. Once fired, all targeting weapons will target this missile instead and will bring them towards the targeted opponent, essentially using your enemy's weapons against themselves. Now years ago I said this was worse than Loki's special, but honestly at least this special actually hits its target consistently unlike Loki. This special's biggest upside, of course, is the fact that it is a map-wide Halo decoy and will screw over all cannons, missiles, mortars, and other tracking specials, so it's a good counterpick for a lot of characters like Fast, Boogie, and Chassis. This special will mostly be used as a defensive tool since it gives you breathing room required in survival to keep a run going or allow you to extend the match time in multiplayer. It can be used on offense since it can ignore auto-targeting, ensuring you a hit on a single target, and it also uses your enemy's projectiles against them. Unfortunately, this is more effective against AI rather than actual players since most are smart enough to simply use rockets, flamethrowers, or non-seeking specials against her. Still though, despite the lacking damage, having a map-wide fuck you to all seeking weapons is a powerful tool and lands it at the bottom of B tier. Tantrum! If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sheila uses her tantrum gun like she does in V8 and Arcade as well, a high ammo tracking weapon that fires very fast and does minor knockback with each hit, plus a high chance to de-arm your opponent's weapons in the process. If I was ranking weapons for consistency, Sheila would be top 3 easily. This weapon is very easy to get to grips with and at the same time is also decently powerful while also being annoying. However, because this weapon is a jack of all trades, it lacks in being a master of none. With the exception of pure ammo count, of course. This weapon has probably the best whammy potential due to how easy it is to score whammies plus how high you can get the whammy counter to go. Since it goes well with most weapons due to the high ammo count, you only need a single box to complement your other weapons, however since this weapon tracks, it can be easily fooled by jammers, decoys, or limbing missiles. So if you love consistency, you'll love this weapon, but if you want the more fun or broken specials, then stick around, cause we're approaching the halfway point. Monkey see, monkey do. If you thought Sheila's whammy potential was disgusting, wait until you get a load of this thing. Okay. Astronaut Bobo's Collector is a grab weapon that once connected will hold the target in front of Bob for several seconds while slightly damaging them. The special on its own does very minor damage that can go through shields, but that's not why this thing is in B tier. It's here due to the amount of whammy potential this thing has with multi-hit special combos. Buckshots, stampedes, swarms, crater makers, cactus patches, and even fucking walls of flame will shred your opponent's health. It's tricky to land a hit sometimes, but if you get caught by a bomb, I'm sorry to say this, but you're already dead. <laughs> Another minor upside to this weapon is due to it being a grab weapon, you can place your target however you choose, meaning it's fantastic for Florida Objective B. However, you must be mindful as your target can very easily escape with a cow puncher or a crater maker hole. If we were considering speedrunning only, then this would get placed much higher, but since we have a wider focus this time around, I've come to notice this weapon lacks in other areas. Firstly, most human players are going to be smart enough to keep their distance between themselves and a bomb player at all times, and can even use cowpunchers or roadrunners in a pinch to make sure a bomb can't get his grabby hands on them. 
You might be able to sneak up on two other players dueling it out, but outside of that you're going to need to be creative if you want to land a hit. The other downsides of course are shields and decoys. Shields may not work against the special itself, but it stops Bob from getting his whammy damage, which as we know is this weapon's major damage output. Decoys can also throw off buckshots and swarms, but this won't work well against stampedes, cactus patches, or walls of flame. The other downside is survival, since more often than not you're going to be killing with a standard weapon rather than the special itself, plus if the target dies in your arms, which more often than not it will, then you take the corpse explosion damage and due to Bob being a lightweight, that damage adds up over time in a survival run. In a head-on between both collector weapons, Bob will come out on top thanks to his faster deployment speed and the absolutely disgusting whammy damage potential. Your go-to choice for Coyote Objective B. Dallas 13 strapped a big fucking laser onto his hood and called it the Mega Collider. This laser is a dry firing weapon that is so powerful it cuts through anything on the map while pushing back opponents and decimating any of the many map destructibles. Now old me may not have been such a huge fan of the knockback on this thing, but, but despite that you can still get good whammies with a well placed stampede or missile swarm, and thanks to the damage on this thing it will shred. And since it goes through walls, this weapon on flat maps with a lot of objects, i.e. aircraft graveyard, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota, you can't hide from this weapon, but you can certainly run. Due to the high power output of this weapon, Dallas has to be locked in place while firing and has a very slow turning radius during fire, otherwise this weapon would crash the game during every use. Speaking of breaking the game, this thing can actually miss entirely with its knockback, since this weapon lowers the frame rate during activation. If the target's hitbox slips between the frame checks on the Mega Collider, they won't receive any of the knockback since the game actually thinks they aren't there, but the damage and whammies will still connect. Some may call that an upside, but due to its unpredictability, I'm calling it a downside. Since we're taking all modes into account, this weapon kinda lacks in all three modes in some way or another, since it makes you a sitting duck, so it's not great for survival or multiplayer on occasions. Uh, it can be useful in speedrunning, but that's fairly uncommon. This weapon gets its high ranking due to pure damage, range, and being the best for destroying the map. Terrain tactics? What the fuck are those? Take a whip! <laughs> Who knew farting on people was so effective? That butthole of yours is a lethal weapon. Molo's smart check has had some minor tweaks over the years, but here in Second Offense, it's still a rear-facing, multi-firing weapon that leaves a trail of gas clouds that will stall and damage any opponent caught in its blast. It may lack damage when compared to the first game, however, it got the added bonus this time around of being able to block projectiles, making it a much-needed defensive weapon for the fat boy. This weapon is so strong on its own that you could very easily get through the quest line using this weapon alone. Due to the stalling mechanic, once you get someone caught in the clouds, you can just let this thing rip until they die, which makes it great for lightweights if you can catch them off guard. This weapon also makes great area denial like Convoy, and you can also shake off pursuing targets very easily with a special weapon. So you've got the only stalling weapon in the game that blocks projectiles, does good damage, and has a high ammo count, plus absolutely shreds when it's inside a bear hug. With the only real downside being that this thing is hard to aim, it's a pretty standout special weapon, it earns its place at the top of B tier. Now though, we're getting into the top shelf stuff. <coughs> Cooldowns? What are those? Boogie's Disco Inferno is a seeking multi-hit projectile weapon, which will lift up the targeted car, spinning them around and damaging them with each consecutive hit. Boogie's Special is what I like to think is one of the defining special weapons for this series, since his special in the first game was part of the reason that Halo decoys even existed in the first place. Plus, adding the radar jammers, lemming missiles, or even just being fucking fast, this special certainly has a lot of counters and the player can respond easily thanks to the special weapon's warning system. You know, that voice line that plays when a character fires a special weapon? Yeah, that thing. This weapon was on top of the old tier list only due to the fact that I had not used it against actual players before, and it's a large difference when versing AI. In speedrunning, it's very easy to make this thing connect and the whammy potential is very high. It's slightly less useful in survival due to the difficulty of actually getting a total with this weapon and it works against Boogie's game plan which is to hit and run, so you're kinda of forced to circle your captured target to avoid incoming fire from the other AI. Multiplayer, however, is the true test of this weapon because good luck getting this thing to connect with an actual human being who's not brain dead. Due to all the counters this weapon has, it's difficult to connect, however, on the off chance you do, it is very rewarding. 
It's also made easier to get this weapon to connect due to the near zero cooldown on this weapon, meaning right after the first slot has finished, the weapon is already raring to go again so you can force your opponent to play on pure defense for as long as you have ammo. This may have lost its top spot, but that doesn't make it any less of a pain in the ass to fight against. Team Fast managed to one-up Boogie this time around. The Blazing Glory Rockets are seeking fireworks that will launch into the air at a high angle, then come back down and hit the target with three separate fireworks. Now that last part is very important because this weapon is actually rather unique in the fact that it's self whammies due to leftover code. Originally, Team Fast was meant to be three separate bikes, a fact we see in their questline images and confirmed by Goodrich himself, so it was one firework for each bike, meaning the game treated each one as a separate projectile. However, once they were merged, the self whammies were left as is due to fears of making Team Fast too useless, and I'm kind of inclined to agree. Now, for speedrunning, this thing is a dream. Decent range with fantastic damage thanks to self whammies, meaning this thing works well as a fire and forget weapon and helps deal with targets far away from you. It's also useful in survival because it allows Team Fast to keep moving, and that's something you really need to do when you've got the lowest HP out of any character. Multiplayer, however, is once again the big factor for this weapon. Similar to Boogie's special, it has a gap between the voice line and the actual hit of the special, so players can either missile boost, decoy, jammer, or lemming missile to avoid the fireworks, and if you do manage to get hit, you can kiss goodbye to any power-ups or transformations you had because those are getting stripped. A feature, of course, taken from Houston 3's laser from the first game. Whammies with other weapons can be a bit tricky due to the timing of the rockets, but the damage output of this weapon makes up for it. A fact we're going to see in the next weapon on this list. This, your bet. this weapon was one of three to keep relatively close to its spot compared to last time. GT's Wheel of Fortune is a six-shot revolver that lacks tracking but does high damage normally and disgusting damage when you get a random supercharged shot, which will also knock the opponent back, but even more so on those supercharged shots. I think it's an understatement how much I love this special despite the fact that it is a very basic weapon. It may not track, but that's actually an advantage since it can't be confused by outside effects and relies purely on how good of a shot you are, and thanks to the damage, this is one of the few weapons you can special only with, and it's even recommended you do that on stages like Louisiana or Alaska. Lord knows I haven't done enough videos with this fucking special. This special may be fantastic for speedrunning, however, it does lack in survival due to the damage output you're more than likely going to destroy your opponent rather than to total them. Plus, when you fire off a supercharged shot, the entire car jolts back and leaves you sitting still for a short second or two. Nothing drastic as the Mega Collider, but those two seconds can make the difference between a missile or mortar connecting or missing. In multiplayer, this weapon can be effective thanks to the fact it ignores tracking, however the projectile is very easy to delete. So with machine gun fire or flamethrowers being a guaranteed delete from the front, as a JT player you want to try and catch your target from the side or behind. Unless that target is a molo, then you definitely want to hit that big juicy side panel. So while you're not going to be doing massive whammy combos like some others, your whammies will be doing a ton of damage, and thanks to Missile Swarm existing, you can very consistently pull them off. Not to mention the knockback, which means you can deny someone from getting weapons or power-ups like Convoy, or you can shove them into the environmental hazards like G-Man, making this a great tool for many occasions. Star power. Cooldowns be damned, this thing still kicks ass. Chassis Star Power is a tracking laser weapon that starts from Chassis herself and will chase down the target while firing a beam over several seconds, which has decent damage but a high tick rate, meaning whammies are very easy to achieve with cannons, rockets, or missiles. This weapon performs well in all three modes, so let's break down the reasons why. Starting with speedrunning, this weapon's high whammy potential means that you only ever need a single special for each target if you're unloading your other two weapons onto them, and it's even more deadly with stampedes or missile swarms. Plus the fact that Chassis herself is very fast and mobile, it means you can get right in close before firing this weapon, so you can maximize the damage and have the laser on your target for as long as permitted. In survival, this weapon is a gem for similar reasons to Team Fast, but better. It's a great fire and forget weapon despite the range being slightly shorter than Team Fast, and thanks to the minor chip damage this thing does. Totaling an opponent with a special outside of a wrecked state is very easy, meaning more wrenches for you, and you can keep speeding around and avoiding enemy fire. Speaking of speeding around, in multiplayer that's exactly what this thing is designed to help with. You don't need direct confrontation for this weapon to work well, so you can hit and run your opponents with this special, and due to the long cooldown, that's exactly what you're going to be doing. 
While this weapon can be fooled by tracking jammers and avoided with a well-timed missile boost, it still has the best tracking of any special weapon with the exception of the two in S tier, but we'll get to those. This weapon pretty much does well in every situation and that cooldown may be its only downside, but it's there as a necessity, otherwise this thing would be broken as hell without it. Time. Man, I used to think this thing was C tier. How wrong I was. Chase's Hard Time is a single ammo shot that will freeze everything in the surrounding area upon impact. And I do mean everything. Enemies, projectiles, other specials, and even environmental damage like Florida's launch pad. So this weapon lacks in both speedrunning and survival, which is why it was so low down on the old list. In speedrunning it's lackluster and you're much better off going for a three weapon combo rather than a special and two weapons. Plus, for survival, getting totals with this weapon is kinda missing the point entirely, and it can buy you some time to avoid your enemies, but thanks to Chase's huge mobility, that's not really an issue. Where this weapon truly shines, and the reason this weapon was considered to the third best, is for multiplayer reasons. This special is a huge fuck you for the person on the receiving end, since you're frozen in time and can't fight back, allowing Chase to do whatever the hell he pleases during this time. Which includes very easy whammy setups, burning you to death with Wall of Flame, launching you to fucking space by stacking cowpunchers or roadrunners, or just unloading cannons and rockets and murdering you. You can destroy the projectile if you're quick enough, but thanks to Chase's mobility, you're going to have a hard time doing that, and thanks to the very little counterplay this weapon has, it lands itself within the top three, sitting just shy of S tier due to its lack of use in speedrunning and survival. Not really shocking on this ending up in S tier, huh? Lord Clyde keeps his lightning dispensing apparatus from the first game, but tweaked it a bit so this weapon can connect to the nearest enemy and possibly one or two more targets. Once connected, this weapon will lift the target up and hold them in place while slightly damaging them over several seconds. This weapon is the second of three weapons that provides no counterplay against it. Because of coding reasons, this weapon seeks out the closest enemy automatically rather than the target, so it will ignore radar jammers, halo decoys, and even lemming missiles. However, thankfully you're safe if you have a shield, since it will not connect if you have one. All that being said, the main damage output from this weapon comes from the follow-up whammies much like Bob's Collector, so a decoy or a lemming will still save you from the follow-up damage, but once you get caught, you better hope those are already in the air, because while he has you grabbed, you're unable to do anything, much like G-Man's Collector. This weapon basically takes the best features from both collector weapons and combines them together, huh? So this special is very effective for both speedrunning and multiplayer, however it does lack in survival for the same reasons Bob's Collector does. You're not going to be totally often due to other weapons finishing off the target and it has the second lowest ammo count when compared to other specials, so you're not going to be abusing this often, but when you do abuse it, you're going to be one-shotting your opponents and that's not exactly fun when you're on the receiving end of this. Man, this weapon is way more disgusting than I gave it credit for. Houston's Toe Twister is a toe hook that will automatically grab the targeted enemy so long as they're within the range, and once hooked, when the distance between Houston and the target changes, the hook will pull on the target, causing minor damage, and that damage increases the faster the distance changes. I'm gonna be real with you guys, this special weapon's only weakness is its short range. That's literally it, and uh, I'll explain why. Firstly, if Houston is targeting you and you go inside her range, you are already hooked, and it literally doesn't matter what defense you have. Radar jammers, halo decoys, lemming missiles, and this special will even ignore your shield. Of course, this wasn't intentional, but like I said at the start, we're ranking this game as it released in 99. Bugs and all. Secondly, there are a ton of whammies you can pull off with the most effective being a buckshot, but a bear hug and an afterburner works just as well. Plus, speaking of the pull damage, this weapon will not disconnect until the timer is up, no matter what happens, so you could be on the other side of buildings or go through a teleport and this will still be connected and rip your health to shreds. To shreds, you say? So you have a weapon that will pretty much connect no matter what if you stay inside your range and can do a ton of damage during that time, and it offers no counterplay since, like I said, you can't avoid it and you can't force it to disconnect early like Bob. Adding to the fact it goes through shields and it's actually useful in survival means it one-ups Clyde and takes the top spot for the best special weapon. Well, we're now half finished and that was the hard part, since the character tier list itself relies a lot on how good the specials are, so I've already done most of the explanations so far. Plus, you'll see a lot of similarities between the special weapon and the character tier list, but before we continue, here's a quick showcase of all 18 special weapons in their new ranked order. Hi, hi. 
Hey, remember how I say these two tier lists share a lot of similarities and placements? Well, D tier is exactly like you might think it is. We have strayed! We're not worthy! Convoy once again avoids the bottom of my tier list. Good for him. Dave's Coltsman drive the Zandu RV, which lacks in pretty much every stat outside of armor, and while that avoidance may seem decent, they have such a large hitbox that it doesn't fucking matter. There's a pretty simple reason why the Coltsmen are on the bottom of the tier list, and it's this. Name me one character that's worse than these guys. Uh, trick question by the way, you can't. These guys are a heavyweight, but have no real upsides to even being a heavyweight. He's in the same weight class as Houston, Clyde, and Padre, and you're gonna find out soon how far away I rank them from the Coltsman. He's also a large target, but lacks armor compared to the super heavyweights. He lacks the speed of his heavyweight counterparts, and to top it all off, he has the worst rank special weapon, so it's no surprise he ends up at the bottom of the pack. But hey, credit where it's due, they are driving a fucking RV, so at the very least it plays like one. I have seen no such outcome in my vision quest. From one character who lacks a questline, to another. Dusty Earth drives his OPD four-wheel drive, which has acceleration on par with Agent Chase, but lower top speed in exchange for a tankier build. Dusty may be fast, but he's not fast enough to beat the lightweights to the items, and he's not tanky enough to really do with the heavyweights, so he suffers from being a jack of all trades. His special can be oppressive and you can do an infinite with bear hugs, but he's fairly consistent and doesn't really excel at anything, so he ends up below most others. It's also really hard to write shit about this guy, I have no idea why. We will meet again, Gaichin. The bane of people's existence in multiplayer. Obaki drives a Tsunami, which is the only car to have two stats maxed out, and has the highest top speed of any character. Due to how small and how fast she is, her avoidance may look low, but it's actually a lot higher than you might think. All this, of course, for having the second lowest health of the game and really shit handling. In two of the three modes, this character is quite terrible. Obaki is more painful to speedrun compared to fucking Convoy, and he's the biggest boy in the game. Plus, in survival, she has zero health and has a useless special that can't even total. However, she's so impressive in multiplayer that you can extend matches for so long and be so untouchable that you need a Clyde or a Houston to even catch you. If you're playing against an Abaki, then the match ends when they say it ends, plus if Abaki has hovers then basically nothing is going to hit her with how disgustingly fast she is with her small frame, however that playstyle is fucking boring as shit, and other characters do the hit and run playstyle much better and are more fun to fight against. Low C tier, fuck you Abaki. be saddle sore for days. Damn, Convoy went up an entire three spots? Convoy drives his Livingston truck, which has the lowest acceleration but the highest durability, and since he hauls around that trailer, it's easy to see why he's slow but built like a fucking tank. What's interesting about Convoy is how someone uses his trailer. For speedrunning, your goal is to lose the trailer as fast as possible in order to speed up Convoy. Since he's so tanky, you're not really at risk of dying in the slightest. However, for survival and multiplayer, the goal is to try and keep the trailer for as long as possible. The beauty of his trailer is the fact that it's an entirely separate health bar, so Convoy has 400 to 500 health, while his trailer is approximately an extra 400, so it can soak up a lot of hits that were aimed at your cabin. Plus, since the hitbox is slightly higher on the trailer compared to the cabin, mortars will always hit the trailer unless it's destroyed, and you won't take any hits unless it's from the front, which may seem like a weak spot, but the area directly in front of Convoy is exactly where he wants you the most. His rolling thunder can push you around when you're there, or he could straight up ram you if he's built enough speed, and in a direct 1v1 confrontation, Convoy always comes out on top. Unless G-Man has a special, of course. Convoy would rank higher, but his special is lacking in the reasons I mentioned earlier, and smaller cars can run literal circles around you. So it's difficult to pin them down, and will tend to bully you once your trailer is gone, since they can hit you from every angle. Take this job and shut it! Oh hey look, it's the direct counter to Convoy. The garbage man drives his grub dual loader, which is a garbage truck that has the lowest top speed of any character but comes in with the second highest durability, and his truck is vastly different when comparing the hot rod version to the standard one. His hot rod form has many hovers which raises the chassis for the truck, allowing it to avoid regular mines, and since the front of the truck changes to a wedge shape, it's much more difficult to ram as hot rod G-Man. G-Man does lack in speedrunning due to his low top speed, but he's very consistent in both multiplayer and survival, which gives him the edge over Convoy on this list. In survival, he's strong enough to go the distance, and his special can weaken cars enough to the point where you can throw them into a wall or machine gun them for easy totals. 
It's especially easy when cars that get eaten are left on 1 HP, which may be a downside in speedrunning, but is useful here. Multiplayer wise, he's able to take a ton of hits and throw them right back, and players must keep a distance with G-Man at all times due to his special. Plus his special suits his game plan, which is to get in close, and he's able to achieve that thanks to his high HP, unlike Bob who's built out of fucking tinfoil. G-Man is very consistent, but he does highly depend on what map you're on, since his special can outperform when it abuses the stage hazards, so if you're facing a G-Man player on California, then whatever you do, just stay away from the cranes. Hello, do you mind? Whatever! From A tier, to B tier, to C tier. Sheila drives her Wonder Wagon, which has high acceleration and high avoidance, but a below average top speed, and she's the fourth lowest HP. Her acceleration may seem high, but it lacks when compared to some of the other lightweights, so she needs to be going at full speed to avoid projectiles, plus her handling feels very tricky to get to grips with, but does perform well over uneven terrain. She can delete people in both speedrunning and survival thanks to purely abusing whammy spammy, not to mention her special allows easy total, so despite her low HP, you can extend her survival run for quite some time. Unfortunately, Whammy Spammy is most effective when you're standing still, and that goes against Sheila's game plan of being a lightweight, which is to hit and run. You can do other things, like a quick missile swarm and a special to chip them down, but since she doesn't really excel in her mobility, she can't avoid getting hit like the other cars in her weight class. She might be a good all-rounder, but with a character lineup this good, you need to be really good at something if you want to get a higher ranking. Houston, we have a go. From 2nd best to 12th, Bob sure has fallen a long way down. Astronaut Bob O escaped from NASA with his Moon Tricker, which has similar stats to Sheila, a high acceleration and avoidance, but an even lower top speed in exchange for slightly more health. Unfortunately, that avoidance stat doesn't really help too much due to Bob's low top speed, tricky handling, and much larger frame when compared to the others in his weight class. He does make up for this with his high whammy and damage potential thanks to his special weapon, making Bobbo a bit of a glass cannon. Bob is fantastic for speedrunning, despite his tricky handling and low speed, once he does catch someone, they're dead instantly thanks to a quick monkey meat shot, and that was the reason why Bob was so highly ranked in the old tier list. Where he lacks though is in the other two areas. This special works against him in survival, since more often than not, you're going to be destroying targets rather than totaling them, since the special doesn't do much damage, and when they die inside the special, the corpse explosion damages Bob, which adds up over time, and with him being a lightweight, he needs all the health he can get. In multiplayer, he can be good or bad, depending on the situation. Due to his speed and handling, it's very difficult to catch someone if they're expecting it, so you need to catch players off guard to land the special, and you need to land that special because Bob doesn't have a hit and run game plan like other lightweights. He can't avoid well either thanks to his large frame, and targets can fight back when they're grabbed, unlike G-Man or Clyde, so a quick cow puncher or even a crater maker hole will get you out of trouble, so it's all or nothing with Bob. You gotta go fast when you play Team Fast. The flying all-star trio brought their Dakota Stunt Cycle, which has high acceleration and avoidance, but they have the lowest HP of any character, and of course they do, they brought a fucking motorcycle to a car combat game. How you play this character depends on what mode you're in. For speedrunning, you don't need to worry about self-preservation a ton, and can just run up to cars and whammy spammy. Something Team Fast can excel at thanks to all their weapon placements being super close together on his small frame, however you want to avoid water as much as you can since they're difficult to drive on water skis. Even more so than normal driving. For survival though, you need to be patient. You can't just run in and expect to tear shit up instantly, you have to keep moving and chip down the AI to score your important wrenches. Although the special doesn't really help with that, it does kill effectively enough that at least you got one less target to worry about for a few seconds. And finally, in multiplayer, you're not going to be obnoxious as Obaki players, but you do need to keep moving and wait for the right opportunity to strike, either using your special and a weapon combo, or sneaking up with a whammy spammy and running off again. The handling is very difficult to get to grips with at first, but your high acceleration, avoidance, and small frame means you're going to be difficult to hit once you do learn how to control the stun cycle. Team Fast are another example of a glass cannon, a ton of firepower, but if you get caught standing still, you're dead instantly. Molo is still the king of the super heavyweights. Molo traded out his school bus for his prison transport blue borough bus. This thing actually has similar stats to Zandu, funny enough, but more armor at the cost of lower everything else. 
Which may seem like a downside, but Molo was given a gift from the gods which makes him very viable, and that's his handbrake turning. If you hold the handbrake button, this thing can turn on a fucking dime, and only recently did I learn that this exists simply because Goodrich wanted to do donuts with Molo's special, rather than any coding shenanigans like I thought it was. Molo is fairly slow, but he doesn't lack an acceleration like Convoy or top speed like G-Man, and thanks to his handling, he feels much better to play than the other two super heavyweights. Plus, in speedrunning, once you do catch up to the AI, you can pretty much delete them instantly thanks to his fantastic special weapon. Plus, in survival, you can just drive by with your special, stopping the AI in their tracks, and then just blast them with your other weapons to get those easy kills and wrenches. In multiplayer, it can get pretty tricky. Since he's such a big target, it's very easy to fuck with him with cow punchers, and he gets hit fairly often by special weapons like GT, Team Fast, or Boogies, but thanks to his special weapon blocking projectiles, you can make a ring around you and make your own cover. Molo might have downsides of being a super heavyweight, but his special covers for his weaknesses, which make him a fun and very deadly character to play as. Half now, half later. Then I call a loco from nothing. Nilo Loco drives a ripoff El Camino that's called the El Guerrero, which has fairly bad stats and a durability that puts her right in the middle of the pack. Nina's playstyle changes whether you're doing quest speedrunning or multiplayer and survival. For speedrunning, it's basically just ignoring the special and using her stats to zip around and whammy spammy as much as you can. I mean, you can whammy with the special, but that's only if you're desperate. And like I mentioned before, the special helps a ton in survival, helping you buy time from enemy projectiles and also allowing you to ignore the auto-targeting and focusing on one target entirely, and due to her speed, she can very easily close the gap no matter where her special is going. In multiplayer is the big kicker. Since this character is easily the most oppressive compared to anyone else, it will most likely be focused first. Which makes sense, because even I think that in speedrunning Nina is a VIP target and must be killed first before anyone else. If you don't do this, however, you allow the Nina to stock up on weapons and they're gonna play like a lightweight character with hit and run tactics while spamming mortars and missiles with the special, so if you want to catch a Nina, then non-tracking weapons are the way to go. Who knew that having a direct counter to anyone with a tracking special would be this powerful? Dallas 13, online. Walls? Where we're going, we don't need to worry about walls. Dallas 13 drives his Palomino 13, which has similar stats to JT, however he traded out some of his speed for extra armor, and he really needs that extra health due to the fact you're a sitting duck when you use his special. Dallas is still really solid all round, and while the special does lack in whammy potential, it's still really good on cluttered maps like Graveyard, but lacks on open maps like Arizona, so make sure the Dallas isn't pointed at you when the laser goes off. Thanks to his speed, he's great for speedrunning if you use the special very sparingly, plus thanks to his armor, he's a good choice for survival as well. With both of these combined, he's a solid choice for multiplayer since he can both run and dodge, or slug it out with whammy spammy. He'll do well either way. So you got great stats, paired with a very situational but powerful special weapon, and he's also great for beginners, which kind of would have made him A tier, but A tier got a little too crowded and this next guy kind of pushed him out. I've got the moves, baby! He may be small, but he's very deadly. Boogie traded out his gremlin for a marathon, which is the third lowest HP of the cast and a lacking top speed, but makes up for it by having the highest avoidance of anyone. Boogie is honestly just a lot of clean fun, and one I consider to have one of the most balanced special weapons due to how much counterplay there is with it, and with its high damage and whammy potential, if you do manage to get a hit, it's probably a knockout. Boogie may not have a questline in second offense, but he plays very similar to his V8 counterpart, so he's great for speedrunning, and he was the reason myself and Zante started doing the pseudo speedruns in second offense in the first place. He may take a while to get where he's going, but once he does, the AI are already dead. Kind of like Molo, actually. For survival, you have to keep moving to maximize the use of your 400 or 500 avoidance. You may be kinda slow, but that avoidance in small frame really makes up for it, so you can just sort of circle around an AI and kill them with a special combined with some easy whammies. The same could be said for a multiplayer, actually. You can't sit still with this guy or you will get punished, and thanks to the near-zero cooldown of his special, you can be very oppressive when you do decide to attack someone. There might be a lot of counterplay, but you can keep on going till your ammo runs out, or till your target dies. The odds were against you, fool! Feeling lucky, punk? John Torque ditched his Jefferson for a much faster Thunderbolt, which has maximum acceleration and a high top speed, but is on the squishier side of durability. Now you all know I'm already a huge sucker for mobility, being a speedrunner, and JT really excels there. He goes fast, and he kills fast, thanks to his high damage whammies. 
even if they're fairly difficult to get outside of a missile swarm. He's also fairly decent in multiplayer if you play like a lightweight character and do hit and runs. Due to your high damage output, you're going to be taking large chunks out every time you do, and you can even knock out unsuspecting opponents. Plus, thanks to your mobility, you can choose the angle of attack to maximize your special weapon. Since it doesn't track, you have to use JT speed to line up at an angle where your target can't avoid, and hitting shots gets easier on bigger targets like Molo, G-Man, or the Coltsman. And hey, if you're feeling really lucky, you can go for those long-range snipes, providing you can predict where your opponent is going. JT's biggest weakness, however, is survival. Since he's on the lower side of durability and his special is terrible at totaling, he's not going to get repairs often, so you really have to hit and run if you want to extend your run for a decent amount of time. Off to three entire tier lists, John Torque is finally where he belongs. Along the greats in A tier. Cherish thy judgment day. C tier special, S tier vehicle. Padre Destino rides in his Goliath Half-Track, which has a very high acceleration and durability at the cost of below average top speed and the worst avoidance overall. Honestly, for stats alone, Padre is in the top three cars, and that's most of the reason why he's this high on the tier list, and he's only really being held back by his special. Padre is also unique when it comes to wheels, as he has tank tracks for his back wheels, and those allow him to get the best speed on off-road and snow terrain compared to any other character. Hell, he doesn't even need ski pickups and he still gets around just fine. Padre is great for speedrunning since he gets to his top speed pretty much instantly, he'll reach that top speed on any terrain, and his weapon placements make him very easy to whammy spammy with, making his times the most consistent of any character. He's also fantastic for survival since he has almost as much health as the super heavyweights but can get out of trouble much faster thanks to his acceleration. His special is one of the worst for totaling cars, but honestly his stats are so good you can pretty much ignore his special. Although it is a great utility tool for getting in and out of fights at any time, like I mentioned before. The same can be said for Padre in multiplayer. He will happily slug it out with anyone if there are no special weapons involved. Plus, he can also position himself like GT and other lightweights at certain angles if he needs to avoid front-facing specials like G-Man, Bob, GT, or a Convoy. Honestly, if his special was any better, I'd be afraid that Padre would be too good. I'm the queen of the silver screen! She may be out of S tier, but she's still really fucking good. Chassis Blue traded her Rattler for her Vertigo, which has almost as much acceleration and top speed as Obaki while still keeping a decent amount of health. Speaking of Obaki, the other big difference between these two is the pure fact that Chassis has an actual fucking car with four wheels and handles normally and not like a bicycle on stilts, so she's gonna be fast, she's gonna handle well, and she's gonna be very annoying to fight against. Firstly, Chassis is a dream in speedrunning and that's why she took the top spot on my old tier list. She has close to, if not the best mobility in the game while still keeping her handling and her special's high whammy potential means she can delete the AI just as fast as she can get to them. Secondly, for her survival, she can maximize the hit and run strategy thanks to her special and as mentioned before, her special doesn't need a direct line of sight to connect. Additionally, due to the multi-hit chip damage, it makes totals a guarantee if you're not whammying. How she is a multiplayer is the kicker and the reason she keeps her top spot. Due to her speed, she's going to get the map resources much faster than most, and her special has 6 shots per box, meaning you're going to be hearing that voice line very often, just over a longer period of time thanks to the cooldown on it. Not to mention, she doesn't have to look at you while firing it, so she can just fire and forget while you have to keep moving just to avoid damage, and if you're playing a big boy, then you're absolutely getting bullied by this thing. So she basically takes Nina's game plan and executes it better, but at least she's not so broken she gets soft banned from the community matches. Unlike the next three on our list. Ladies and gents, the future of law enforcement is here, today. Funny enough, Chase was the only character to keep his position on the tier list. Agent R Chase drives his Chrono Stinger, which has very similar stats to Chassis, although with slightly lower acceleration, speed, and durability for a better avoidance and a disgusting special weapon. Remember that entire bit about Chassis having really good mobility that I said about 60 seconds ago? Yeah, all of that can be applied here since Chase has very similar stats, and since his wheels are more apart than hers, he actually feels better to control than Chassis. Making him fantastic for speedrunning, though I tend to ignore the special since getting hits on AI compared to actual players is so much easier. He's not the best for survival since his special is wasted for totaling and is better served buying you time and setting up very easy whammy combos and totals. The reason Chase and the other two Esther slots are soft band is due to the special weapons, all of which we covered already, but Chase goes well with his special since he can just run up, fire his special, then delete most of your health and there's almost nothing you can do about it unless you're ready for it. Just pretty god that he misses. 
So by process of elimination, there's only Clyde and Houston left, and they're obviously both Esther material and both disgustingly broken. Therefore, the only question left is, who takes the gold medal between the two of them? Well, let's reveal who the lucky loser is in second place. Future, some predicted, I inflicted. Lord Clyde is driving his Excelsior stretch and man does this thing fucking excel. It has the most balanced stats for any character at around 270 for each stat at the cost of terrible avoidance. Which wouldn't matter much anyway since he's so long that the avoidance reticule doesn't even leave his frame at top speed. Not to mention you're playing fucking Clyde. You don't need avoidance when you have a special that stops other people from having fun. Unsurprisingly, Clyde is disgusting in speedruns and is probably the most contested world record due to how fun he is to play. He has the stats to get where he needs to be fast enough, plus his special allows other weapon combos to instantly delete anyone he picks up. The only downside is the fact you need another weapon for this special to work because it's pretty useless by itself. And of course, he's disgusting in multiplayer due to the special snapping to the target, ignoring radar jammers and decoys. However, you are safe under a shield, so make sure you get one if you're within 6 feet of a Clyde. Add to the fact he's a heavyweight, so his health allows him to go the distance in matches if need be. At this point, you're probably asking why Clyde only got second place, and I'll answer that question after I finish explaining why Houston is our top pick for the tier list. How do you like that for an overhaul? I never really knew the true power Houston held until now. Houston drives a Samson tow truck, which has lower speed and durability than Clyde, but a higher acceleration and an avoidance stat that actually matters. Houston tops this list because she's fantastic in every mode she's placed into. Speedrunning is great because her special allows you to multitask both objectives A and C. Although it might lack against the super heavyweights, you can just whammy them to death anyway, plus with Houston's speed you can get around the map fairly easily. In survival, she's easily the best character to use since she has a good durability, a good mobility, and a special that not only is a guaranteed hit but easily the best weapon for getting totals with and that's something that's super important in survival. But the cherry on top is multiplayer, since if you thought Clyde was bad, then Houston's a whole nother ballgame, Sonny. Like I mentioned before, her special will instantly hook the targeted car if it's within the range and it ignores everything. Jammers, decoys, ninas, and even shields. No one's safe from this tow hook. Even if you're on the other side of the map, she can just chase you down and hook you anyway. So to answer the earlier question of why Houston beat out Clyde, there are three reasons why. Firstly, Houston's special does not rely on whammies like Clyde. It can't do the TKOs like Clyde on heavyweights, but it's much more consistent. Secondly, Houston ignores shields while Clyde can't. Admittedly, this is a bug and wasn't intended, but like I said at the start, we're judging this game based on the 99 release build. Bugs and all. And thirdly, Houston is far superior when it comes to survival compared to Clyde, which is one of the three modes we're taking into consideration. And that's it. My suffering is finally over. More than 11,000 words and god knows how many hours of editing later, we arrive at the end of this long but much needed tier list. I'm just glad I never have to do another tier list or second offense again. Right? Before I end off here, I can't wrap things up unless I give out a much needed thanks to the people in the Vigilante community who contributed to this video existing. Firstly, cheers to Zante for being a fellow speedrunner who also played a shit ton of survival and multiplayer so I didn't have to, as well as for taking part in my videos both past, present, and probably future. Secondly, huge thanks to David Goodrich as always for joining me in my videos, along with joining this community plus being a major reason why I and many others love this Vigilante series from their childhood. Also, I'd be amiss without mentioning talented player Rashid, who comes up with a lot of the strategies, techniques, and combos for these characters, allowing us to gauge just how broken they are. In addition is my thanks to Chassis and DDoc for the many resources I've been using in my videos, such as the character poses, voice lines, and the music. Though I did have to vector the cars myself, though. Now, who else am I forgetting? Oh, that's right, I have to thank you. Yeah, you, the viewer, and all you guys out there who've subscribed to this channel. This video was a celebration of me hitting a thousand subs, meaning I can finally be a cunt and put ads in my videos. So again, thank you for always tuning in. I'll see you fuckers in a week.
Thank mm-hmm. you.